Raging wildfires, devastating hurricanes, and widespread flooding. Just some of the big weather stories we saw in 2019. For a look back at some of those big weather events of this year, let's bring in David Phillips, senior climatologist with Environment Canada. Great to see you. Thank you, Angie. You know, one of the big ones that we've been talking about, uh, Hurricane Dorian. Historic on so many fronts, of course, uh, for the Bahamas, also hitting the Maritimes as well. Absolutely. You know, it was an active hurricane season. I think there were 18 tropical storms, normally it would be 12. But Dorian was the biggest and the baddest one of all, both globally and, and also in Canada. It, I mean, it just devastated, annihilated the, the Bahamas. This was the most powerful hurricane to make landfall in uh uh, in the Bahamas, and it just pirouetted around there for like almost two days right. or three days. And with powerful Category 5 winds, it still had a lot of energy, fuel, and uh, and rain when it came up to Nova Scotia. It really slammed into uh, the province. Mm -hmm. It became the most, you know, the more public infrastructure was damaged in that storm than any other in Nova Scotia, and they know storms there. They and very well do outages, know storms. It was really quite devastating. And now, of course, the aftermath in terms of that cleanup we know Bahamas still reeling from it. And to note that it's a couple of areas, islands in the Bahamas that yes. were hit, not the entire area, but still uh, reeling from that. As well as you mentioned, Nova Scotia, still trying to rebuild and saying, this hit us harder Absolutely. than we've seen before. And more power outages in the in the province than any other storm in history. I mean, it absolutely, and it was 80%, and they weren't out of power just for a, for a couple of days, some of them for a week or, or longer. Yeah. So it was really, uh, it, 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 what surprised me, it had all this energy coming up from the, it wasn't spent in Bahamas, it actually uh, gained more strength coming into the Maritimes. It did. Uh, another area that California, we know, has been hit, uh, massive wildfires yes. there. Australia is still reeling and dealing with those fires. Um, you know, talk to me a bit about that. A drier season than was anticipated. But interestingly enough, when we bring it back home, BC didn't have the fire season that they've had in the past. It, it was uh, like fire, forest fires in British Columbia were just, just not happening this year. We had yeah. forest fire fighters fighting in other parts of the world, not in British well, Columbia. We've got Canadians in Australia right now. Exactly. And so what we're seeing right now as we speak, terrible fires in Australia. They've had the uh, January to October, I'm sure later in November and December too, mm -hmm. the driest, hottest period on record. You can't buy a, a face mask in Sydney. The uh, the It's very orange kind of pay, uh, kind of sky. It's um, very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. We saw that situation also earlier in California. It wasn't as bad as the last two years, but Angie, there wasn't enough fuel to to feed those fires. Right. You know, they, they were the strongest winds in 10 years, the Santa Ana winds, the Diablo winds. The power companies got into trouble because they cut power because uh, they didn't want their infrastructure causing fires. And that was a, a big controversy. But uh, still, it's just... And then now you end... The fire season ended with the big flood season because mm -hmm. then you That's have right. all these rains came. We had them in Amazon, but that wasn't weather or climate. That was just deliberately slash and burning, yep. cutting down trees and then turning it into logging... Uh, uh, in, in, uh, or, or farm areas, and mm. so, but hey, a lot of fires, but hey, it took a, a bit of a preve into Canada, except in northern British, uh, northern Alberta, mm -hmm. they had almost twice as many fires as they normally have, and uh, several evacuations, but it was fairly quiet this year in Canada from the wildfires. Flooding, however, leading to power outages and whatnot, uh, not, not quiet for us uh, here in Canada. Uh, Ottawa floodings, yes. um, Numbers surpassed record levels. Uh, we know that Quebec was dealing with a major power outage. Um, taking a look at that, what does that say in terms of preparing now for the future? Well, you know, we're seeing more of this, you know, and people are saying, you know, is this the, the stuff of our grandparents? Well, it's the same weather. Right. You know, we're not seeing any new weather. I often think, Angie, if you could say, well, we're getting tornadoes in January and we're getting sandstorms in, in Ottawa. No, it's not that at all. Mm -hmm. It's just the same weather. It's just that it's ramped up. It's mm -hmm. got more steroids on it. It's like, you know, stronger and more longer lasting. And I always think in Canada, I used to say the best thing about Canadian weather is that weather hits and runs. Mm -hmm. Now it stands around and torments you longer, yeah. has more time to spread its misery. So we're seeing more costly, more disruptive events, not deadly. In fact, around the world, there are fewer people dying from weather, but it's just the fact that it's economic hits, mm -hmm. uh, billion dollar disasters, and nobody's left out in the cold. I mean, everybody's affected. We used to think these things occurred on the other side of the world. They're occurring in our own backyard. In our own backyards, absolutely. And, and well, speaking of weather and, and in the winter season right now, the fall, the, the, uh, a fall snowstorm hitting the prairies hard. 
hitting farmers hard oh. because massive crops have been destroyed. And we were talking to a number of farmers who are saying, well, we're losing uh, a good portion of our crops here. And, and that's going to, of course, that, that spills over into how that affects the economy, how that affects the consumer directly. You're absolutely right. The worst, most challenging year for Canadian farmers this year, particularly on the prairies, and it was a cold kind of year anyways, very record droughts at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then the rains came and they were elated. They couldn't turn the faucet off. And yeah. they got massive snowstorms, as you say, and, and heavy rains. There are still millions of acres on the prairies today, as we speak, mm -hmm. that are not going to be harvested until 20, uh, 2020. It's, it's just devastating yeah. to them. And they've had problems with weather, but they've had tariffs and trade and, and transportation issues. Boy, I think, I think the world of farmers, and they've really been challenged this oh, They year. work extremely hard, but they are, in many ways, at the mercy of Mother Nature. Uh, Venice, yes. you and I were talking about this, uh, a city that is sinking but underwater. Yes. Literally. And, you know, we saw this year in November, we saw the, the second highest tud, a tide height, height in, uh, in, in, in about 100 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think of, I saw this statistic that really shook me with St. Mark's Basilica, that beautiful facility in, in, uh, in Venice. It has flooded six times in the last 1,200 years. But four of those have occurred in the last 20 years. Unbelievable. They are seeing the, uh, the city is falling. It's, it's, we're seeing higher water levels. We're seeing stronger storms from the uh, Mediterranean. And it is just something that, hey, get used to it because this is going to be the, the sign of what we're going to see more of in the future. Let's talk about now the future. And of course, you know, what your sense, what pulse do you have on what we can anticipate in 2020? Well, we always do a better job describing what we've had than what I we're going to get. <laughs> I always put you on the spot. <laughs> but, you know, I think that certainly there will always be more weird, wild, and wacky weather. You know, Canadians talk about the weather mm -hmm. more than any other subject in the world. We'll probably continue to do that. But, you know, the world is also talking about the weather that Canadians always done because weather just seems to be different now and more more impactful and more more extreme and uh, and just uh, and very costly. And something we need to be really keeping aware of. Yes. All right. David Phillips, Senior Climatologist with Environment Canada. Always great chatting with you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you so, so much. much.